heaven and lasted till December 1977. And during this period of time, there was another person that was very important to this whole thing, and she was Dr. Velaide Cecin. And why is she important? She's important because she was, despite the fact that she was very young, she just graduated, she was like 24 or 25, she was given her first job assignment in a small hospital in the island of Colaris, where she went to work and treated at least 400 patients that were attacked, native Brazilians, that were attacked by the boss of light in that situation where the Brazilian Air Force, through the Operation Saucer, was conducting its investigation. And she was very smart, and she kept record. That was something that Brazilians didn't, didn't do on the 60s or the 70s, but she kept records. She was very curious about that phenomena. She was amazed to see the scars in people, and she kept record of the, the history of the patients. And she could prove that actually, when they were attacked, some blood was taken from their bodies, from the victim's body. And this is why the phenomenon was called suck, suck, because it sucked blood. People would faint, sometimes for hours, sometimes for days, four people died. She was the one who took care of them all. So these three, pers these three characters were very important in the history of UFOs in the Amazon. Now, let's see some of the results that we have so far of the Operation Saucer. I wish we had more time that I could present this longer and more detailedly. But let's see. The papers that we know that were produced during this four months operation, they were at least 2,000 pages, of which of width 400 only. About 20% were released. So the government is still holding 80% of everything that was produced. And certainly, it's holding the hardcore of the information, the most important, relevant information of what happened in the Amazon. But take a look at some of the pages. You can see maps made by triangulation. Radars were used. Everything was used. Two to three dozen men were involved in this operation. These are aerial maps where you can see the paths of the UFO and the small villages of Amazon and that particular area of Colaris and how it all happened. Look at this, detailed, detailed information in this 2,000 page. And this is only some pages of example, <coughs> I'm sorry, out of the 400, and there are still 1,600 that must contain much more relevant information about UFOs. Now take a look at that. Motherships like this first one in a disc-shaped format reported. This was seen and documented by the military who took part in Operation Saucer. Not only by civilian. Take a look at this. Hundreds of photos were taken. Cases of near collisions were reported. All sorts of cases involving that whole situation of UFOs in that particular area of Brazil. Now, take a look at, at some actual photos of the UFOs taken by those military. Here, you have a few of them. We know, because it was informed to me in the interview that I did with Colonel Holanda, the commander of the Operation Saucer, that over 500 pictures of UFOs, including at very close range, range, were taken in the Amazon. However, during the disclosure process in Brazil, only less than 200 were already released. This is why we're going to phase three, as I told you before. Take a look at some of them. This one is supposed to be, this one on the left is, on the, the left is supposed to be a mothership, as described by Holanda. Disc-shaped objects. Very big, immense, immense objects over the Amazon rivers in Brazil, with the knowledge of the military, and more than the knowledge, the direct involvement from anything between two and three dozen men from the Brazilian Air Force in an official mission 
to investigate UFOs in that particular area. Now, we know, since Holanda told us, and also because of the papers that were declassified, that also 16 hours of films, footage of UFOs in two formats, Super 8 millimeter and Super 16 millimeter, millimeter were made by the military of the UFOs, including of the big motherships with small objects revolving around them. And as of now, nothing of this material was released by the government. This is, again, why we're going to phase three. We want them all. We want every single minute of it. Those 16 hours belong to the Brazilian people. The Brazilian people want it from their government, and we'll have it, because we are serious about what we're doing. And we are going, I'll give you the taste of what we're doing in phase three. We're, if necessary, suing the Brazilian Air Force, the Brazilian Army, the Brazilian Navy, and a few other institutions. They can be sued, why not? They can, to get the information that they are illegally holding from us, illegally. Now, when it comes to Operation Saucer, the whole thing that we keep asking is, or the ultimate question that we do is, was Operation Saucer really shut down? Let me ask you, let me tell you why I ask you that. Because we know from all the documentation of the Operation Saucer in the Amazon that it had three main, 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 Goals, objectives. The first one was to document the sightings through very detailed reports. And over 2,000 pages were produced, of which 400 were released. To document the objects through photos and films as thoroughly as possible, as clear as possible. And we know that 500 photos were taken, 200 were released, 16 hours of video were taken, none was released. And the third goal, the ultimate goal was, and this is, this is in the papers, is try to engage in a safe attempt of communication and contact with the extraterrestrial entities. Of course, it's not, self, it's, not, it's, it's not told extraterrestrial. With the intelligences beyond the phenomenon. This is how the document reads. Document reads. And did that ever happen? Yes, it did. It was confirmed by Coronel William G. Olinda that by December 1977, he was close to an area where the military used to camp in a small boat in this Guajara River, almost getting back by sunset when they have a sighting of a huge object and a close encounter happening. Now, while giving this interview to us, Uranjil Landa was very uh, positive about everything, and he could remember every single detail of what happened in those four months in the Amazon. And he draw to us this and many other pages that you can find on our website, ufo.com.br, where he, he would show how the UFOs look like. These are drawings made by a colonel of the Brazilian Air Force, now died, now dead, uh, of his own sightings, in his men own sighting, in a military official operation to, operation to investigate UFOs in the Amazon. Now, the most amazing part of it is when he describes what happened on that December 1977, almost the end of the month, when he was with the, one of his men in that river, the Guajara River, just going back to his camping. When they saw, both guys saw, a huge cylinder-like object, 300 feet high, almost landing on the other side of the river, and from the upper portion of it, a door was open, and a creature, just like that, 
using a uniform, a white uniform and a casket and a helmet, came floating. 300 feet, folks. Came floating and floating and floating and floating and staying just in front of them. They only had eye contact. No communication. No nothing. And that was it. That was an official close encounter. But when William Jolanda went back to his people, to his commander, Protásio Oliveira, to report what happened, strangely, he was told to shut down the Operation Saucer. But how come? One of the, the, actually, the ultimate goal of the Operation Saucer was to establish contact with intelligence beyond the phenomena. How come that when it happens, they shut down Operation Saucer? That just can't be. And I had that in my mind forever. Now, a couple of months ago, I could confirm that Operation Saucer actually never stopped, was never shut down. It just changed people. People in charge of it were, were taken away, and other people took its place, and it continued under a much higher level of secrecy, run, and most of it, by U.S. military in the Amazon. What about that? Now, are you ready for more Brazilian UFO sightings? Okay. Okay. We know that Operation Saucer lasted a few more years, and we are now in the process of getting more details about it, but it's been really hard. The guys who are in the position to talk us about it are not talking yet.